Hi everyone, it's Ben from Structured Parametrics. Today we're going to have a look at a simple dynamic truss. Okay, as before, I've got Rhino on the left, Grasshopper on the right. I'm going to start by setting a point that I can move around later if I need to. So I'll have a dynamic. So I'll just double click and I'll start searching for my command, which is point. Now I wanna set a point for now. It can be changed later. But for now, I'm just gonna set that. In Rhino, it's asking me where to put that. I'm gonna type zero comma zero comma zero. Enter. Now I have a point. It's showing it in the Rhino screen and it's a component in Grasshopper that I can control later. Now the next part is I want another point which is going to be the end of my truss that I want to control dynamically. So I'm going to search for a slider, number slider, and I'm going to change it to uh, integers and I'm going to make this in millimetres, so I'll make it 30,000 millimetres. Now I can control the other point from 0 to 30,000. 30, now to set the next point, I'm going to first deconstruct this original point, so it's relative to where I've started from. And then I'm going to create constructor point with everything the same except for the x value because I want it to span in the x direction. So I'll join up the z and the y. Now the x, I want the original plus my slider. So I'll add an addition. I'll get my original x, I'll add my slider and then I'll join that to the next X. So now you can see I've got two points, but I can control where the second point is. Now the next part, I want a top chord of this truss. So I'll make a line and use this line here, which is create a line between two points. I already have two points. I've got my original and my second point. So there we have a line. Now I just might rearrange some of this a little bit so it makes a more logical sense. Okay, so now we have our line. Now, to create a Warren truss, I obviously have to split this line into a number of segments. So I'm going to set up another slider here. A number slider. And again, I want it to be integers only because I can't have fractions. And I'm going to set this to say 10 segments. Now with my line, I'm going to split this into 10 segments. Now, there's a number of ways to do this, a number of components that will split a line up in division. So I don't want a distance, I don't want a length. This one looks perfect. Divide a curve into equal lengths certain segments. So it's asking for a curve, a number, and kinks. So I'll add my curve to it. It's already got a number 10 in there. Now I'm going to add my slider into that number. Now I'm just going to change this because we don't want zero. That would make sense. So I'll make it a minimum of one, but I'm going to send it to five. Okay. Now we obviously need 
a second chord, the bottom chord of our truss. So I'm going to create that now. First thing is, I want to have the chord lower than the bottom chord, and I want to vary that number. So again, I'm going to set up a slider. I'm going to set this to integers for millimeters. I'm going to set it to a minimum of say 100 mil and a max of four meters. Now my first point, you know, where I truss of the bottom chord is offset in the X direction from the original top chord point. So I'm going to create a point with this component. I want the Y to be the same as the original point. So I've already got that. So I've got my Y. I'm going to set up the Z point by getting the original Z and subtracting my slider value. So here's the original Z. Take away our slider value. Now I'm going to set it a bit higher than 100. Then I'll plug that into Z. So there I have it in the Rhino screen, but I need to offset it by a value which is half the length of a segment. So to do that, I've got to find where this point is and make the X value half of that. So I really need to find out this point here and work backwards from there. So how I can do that is I've got all the points from this component. I'm going to go to the list section, retrieve a specific item, and I want item number one, which is actually the second point. Let's get off the screen here. Item number one. Yeah, I've got that point. Now, what I need to do is get the x values of these points. So I'll de deconstruct it. And I need to compare this to the X value of the, because I need an average between the two, of the original point. So I'm going to add them up and divide them by two. So I get the original X point, the X value of the second point, It's just a value, then I'm going to divide it by two. Now it's actually division. So divide, set this as two, divide by two. Now I have that value. Now I'm going to make that the X value of this point here. So there it is. Now I need to do the same thing on the other side. So we need to get the second last point and the last point do the same thing. So to do that, so to do that, I'm again going to go to my lists. I'm going to get the last item. So to do that, I'm going to work out how long the list is. 
tells me six. And I'll plug that into the integer. So now, obviously there's six items, and the list is six items long, but I want the fifth item. So to do that, I'm just going to do a little cheat here and say x minus 1. So that's actually the last item. And likewise, I need the, I'm just going to copy and paste that. And I need the second last item. So I'll say that's x minus 2. So now I have last and second last. And I'm going to extract the x components of those points. There's one. There's two. Then I'm going to subtract and divide by two. Add and divide by two, I should say. Add the x's. Divide. By two. And then I'm going to create that point. <clears throat> now I'll just copy this component but because basically we have our Z value correct already. Our Y value is the same as the original point and the X value is the new value we want. So there we have it. So now we have our start and end points of the bottom chord. Create a line to connect the two. Now we want to divide the chord by a number minus one from the original count. So I'll do a subtract. I'll get my original count. The bottom chord always has is divided by one less than the top chord. Oh, minus one from, like I said. Then I'm going to use that same divide component to divide this bottom line. So put the line in number of segments and then we have it now to create the chords of the truss i'm going to first do the ones running left to right and then right to left so the first thing to do is to order these second points because we've done them in all sorts of orders so we have to uh, sort them, filter them, so that they order in a logical order. So under point we've got sort points and this is just going to sort them from lowest to highest in the x direction. Now the original one is actually already sorted so we don't have to do that. The top chord trusses points. So now we can just join the two together. However, we've obviously got one more point in the top chord than the bottom chord, so I'm going to have to drop one point off the top chord to do this. So I'm going to use a cull. I'm going to use a cull nth. And I want the last point. So I've already done a component of list length, which tells me the six points. So I want to cull the sixth value from this list of points. So there it is. Now we can just literally add these lines together. Top to bottom. 
and now we have to do the other uh, chord direction. And to do that, I'm going to take this same list of points, but I'm going to cull the first one, which we don't need anymore. So cull nth again. Well, actually, I'm going to cull an index, which the index will be zero. So in other words, the first point, I'll set that to zero. I'm going to cull this list. So now I have the last segments. And then I'm going to join these lines together. But this time I'm going to go from bottom to top. So bottom to top. There it is. So now I have a truss where I can vary the height. I can change the number of chords and I can vary the span or the length of the truss as well. Thanks for watching this structured parametrics video. Leave a like or subscribe if you found this useful and we'll see you in the next one.